Hey everyone, and welcome to a new video on the CBI channel. Uh, this video is the first one in a range of videos talking about using the Google Maps APIs inside of your Python Django application. In this tutorial series, we will focus on four different topics in four different videos. This video will start with a configuration inside of Google Cloud and Django, so we can actually use the APIs inside of our project. Next, we're gonna focus on geocoding, which will translate uh, an address to coordinates. Um, we're also going to calculate distances between different address points using, of course, the Google Maps APIs. And we are going to place markers on the map so users can see the output of what we are doing inside the application. In this video, we focus on six activities. And the first ones are all about arranging the right configuration on the Google platform. We will start by setting up our Google Cloud account. Next, we will create a project on the Google Cloud console, which will function as a container uh, for the service that we will be using. We will also use the Google Maps platform and store the API key that is generated uh, in a place where we can use it later on in our Django app. And we are going to enable a number of APIs that we will be using in this tutorial series. Thereafter, we also need to make some changes to our Django project. We will start by adding the API key that was generated by the Google Maps platform to our settings at Python. And as the last task, we will install the Google Maps package with the Python client on our Django application. So the first step in this video is setting up our Google Cloud account. And uh, we are getting started by going to cloud.google.com inside of your browser. And that will bring you to this Google Cloud page. Um, you can see in the top right that I have already signed in with my Google account. Um, yeah, please, if you already have an existing Google account that you want to use, uh, sign in there. If you don't have it, uh, create one and then just sign in here on the Google Cloud as well. Uh, so we can proceed with the next steps of this tutorial. And you can already see that they offer you a $300 in credits and free usage of a lot of different products. And this is great. But unfortunately, similar to many other vendors, you will need to provide your credit card details in order to do this. So you can find all of the APIs and services of Google inside of the console. So go to the top right of your screen and select the console there. And this will load up the cloud environment for Google. Now, um, you can already see, uh, well, you want to see it right here, but in order to do different kind of things here, um, I will need to activate my account and make sure that I have a free trial started. So on the top right, we're gonna be clicking start free and this will ask me for some information. So first of all, it's going to ask you your country and what describes best your organizational need. Well, I'm just gonna put it on other. And of course I have read and agreed to the terms of service in place. And this will put me to step two, which is inputting my additional address information um, and also putting in my payment type. Um, so it will ask you to enter your name, your address lines, your postal codes, and over here also your payment uh, method, including credit card. So I'm going to uh, yeah enter my personal details here right now, and I will be back to you once this has been completed. All right, with our payment information successfully added to our uh, Google Cloud console, we can get started. And the first thing that we need to do is create a project. And a project will function as a container for all of our different services. So on the top, you see a widget that says select a project. And we are going to create a new project. And in that project, I'm going to give it the name Maps Tutorial, but you can give it the name, whatever is recognizable for you. And I'm just going to put create. I'm not going to put it under any organization. So it is taking its time now to create this project. And I will get back to you once this has fully loaded and is visible in our console. Okay, I've refreshed my Google Cloud console and now the select a project um, dropdown is present again. And when I click on it, I can select the project that we have just created called Maps Tutorial. So I am going to select this one. And now on the top, you will see that we are working inside of this project. And the next step is looking for the Google Maps platform and generating our API key for our project. 
And we can find that by going into the search bar and search for Google Maps platform. And you will straight up see it under project and pages. Uh, that's real world insights and location experiences with the Google Maps platform. And when we click it, it's actually going to do quite some things for us out of the box already. So you can see that it is loading up. And it's already presenting us with an API key that we can use inside of our project, which is really convenient because we will need this in order to uh, progress on our project. So I am going to copy this and I'm going to uh, yeah, store this somewhere because we will need it later. Um, yeah. Also, make sure that your API keys are never visible for the outside world. I'm also going to delete this one once this tutorial is done because you want to keep these things a secret. Otherwise, people can use these kind of services uh, under your name. Um, and it's automatically going to say, do you want to enable all of the Google Maps APIs for this project? Or do you want to select only the ones that you use? And in addition, do you want to create budget alerts to stay on top of the spending and notify you? Or do you just want to let it exceed everything? Well, I want to keep on the create budget alerts, but I'm going to turn off the enable all Google Maps APIs for this project because I don't need all of the APIs. I only need a few and I'm going to select them by hand. So deselect the top one, leave this one in place just to be sure when you exceed this 200 monthly uh, credits, even though I'm sure you won't. Uh, and by doing this, we now have our API key, which is copied safely to our clipboard. And we're going to go to the Google Maps platform. And when I wanted to continue, it also asked me to protect my uh, API key, um, whether we want any particular restrictions on it. And for now, we do not want to restrict our key because we're going to use it for local development. So I'm going to click on maybe later. And this will bring me to the Google Maps platform where we can enable some of the APIs that we will be needing for our project. So to select the APIs that we will be using in this tutorial series, you need to go to the left menu and click on APIs and services. And there you will get different cards that will display the different APIs that are available. And you can enable or disable them by clicking on the button. And in this tutorial series, we're going to use five different APIs. So we're going to start off by using the places API. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit. And at some point here on the right hand side, I will see the places API and I'm going to enable that one. Um, in addition, I would also like to use the uh, distance matrix API because that's very handy when you want to calculate distances between the different, uh, yeah, the different location points. Um, I also want to use the geocoding API, which is very handy in converting addresses to coordinates. Uh, which can be very beneficial for us. And last but not least, I also want to use the Maps JavaScript API. So let me see where that last one is. Here we go, the Maps JavaScript API. All right, so you can see that, uh, yeah, these ones will be enabled for me on side of the Google Cloud Platform, and they will be ready to be used for us inside of our project. Later on, you can always go back and disable certain APIs or enable certain APIs so to supplement your, your project or your particular use case. All right, so we have now created a project inside of the Google Cloud Console. We have uh, created an API key and we have enabled all of the different APIs that we will need during this tutorial. So from the Google Platform side, everything is done. Now it is time to configure our Django project and make sure that we can use this API key from our Django application. And in order to do that, we're going to do two things. The first thing that we're going to do is add some things in the settings. So um, the thing that we need to add to our settings is actually the API key that we received from Google. So in our settings that by file, we're going to state Google API key. And this is going to be equal to your key. Now, of course, ideally, you don't want to have your key hard coded inside of your settings. Because let's say that you publish this to GitHub, uh, it is in an open repository, people would potentially be able to take your key and use it themselves if you would not stop it timely. Um, you just want to keep these kind of things a secret. And you can do that with environment variables. Um, so we are going to create an environment variable that will store our key. Um, and yeah, that way it will be secure inside of our code. 
Now, if you just want to test a few things out and see how it works, feel free to just hard code your key here, just paste the value that we received from Google right here. Uh, and you can skip the next part, uh, but we are going to make it an environment variable. And that's actually really simple. The first thing that we need to do is import OS. And you don't need to install anything for that, but it's going to be there natively. And now we're going to create an environment variable on our computer. So I'm going to go to our menu. I'm going to go to my settings. And I'm going to find environment. And then it's going to state edit the system environment variables. So we're going to go there. The system properties window will pop up. And over there, we can select environment variables. And from there on out, I'm going to generate a new environment variable. And I'm just going to call it AAA Maps API, since it will then get listed here on top. Feel free to call it wherever you want. Uh, it's best to just call it something that you remember, such as Google Maps API or something like that. Next, we're going to set the value to the value of our API key that you've copied from the Google Cloud Console. And we're going to click on OK. And you will see that it will appear in this window right here, including the value. Uh, now, important to mention, um, I've added a few times that the environment variables did not work immediately. I needed to restart my computer for, in order for it to work. So please restart your computer so it will take that into account when you actually go on developing. All right, so we can now close the, all of these windows. And in our application, we can point towards that environment variable on my local computer. So I'm going to go back to my setting here, to Google API key. And what I can do now is simply say os.environ.get. And then I'm going to give it the same name as what I had in my environment variable, environment variable which is AA Maps API. And by doing this, my computer will take a look at my environment variables on my computer. It will look for the name AA Maps API, and it will take the value and use that here. And that way, when you publish your code somewhere, no one will know what the actual value will be here. It will just be for yourself. When you deploy your application, you always have the ability to set variables there as well. And you can do that in the same way. So you can create an environment variable on the platform where you deploy it and give it the same value as what you do on your local computer. Small rectification, uh, please use these round brackets instead of the square brackets that I've just shown you. Um, yeah, that was a small mistake. It needs to be the, the round ones. You will also see the square brackets in the next clip, but uh, yeah, the round ones are the right way to go. The next thing we need to do is install the Python client of Google Maps. And this will help us uh, with some of the functions that we will use in the uh, upcoming tutorials. So the package that we are going to install is called Google Maps. You can install it by using pip install Google Maps. So I'm just going to copy it from here, but feel free to just uh, follow my lead on the terminal here. So I'm going to say, uh, just paste it, pip install Google Maps. And it will just take its time. There we go. And by doing this, we will be able to, uh, yeah, to use the Google Maps functions and, and use the full functionality um, in our application. And there we go. And that is actually all we need to do for configuration inside of our app. And that was it for the first video in this tutorial series. In this series, we successfully configured our uh, Google Cloud Platform and the settings in our Django project. In the next videos of this series, we will focus on geocoding from an address to coordinates, making distance calculations between two different location points, and also placing markers on a map. Thank you very much for watching these videos, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video of this series.